Hello and welcome to. That was a dog barking. Hello and welcome to. Oh my god. Hello and welcome to. It's hot and sweaty and we're out in nature. Apologies for any outdoor noise. I'm gonna try to filter out as much as I can. The birds are nice. The lawn mowing and the dump trucks, not so much. The dump trucks just make me sad because I'm literal trash. <laughs> it's nice out, uh, a little humid. I'm a little moist. Remember kids, sweat is just your fat crying. But you know what, I wanted a different setting for a different kind of video and this is just gonna be be, be me blabbing um, off script which you normally don't get to see because I like to write my thoughts down because I'm better at writing them down than I am speaking them just spontaneously but I figured the most genuine way to get across what I've been feeling would be to do this in a way that wasn't scripted I've been thinking a lot lately and I've been having this prevalent thought. So I have a question for you, I suppose. Do you ever just get really fucking sick and tired of yourself? Me. <laughs> Currently feeling that feeling in full spectrum. Just incredibly frustrated with myself. And I was reading the other day, I somehow stumbled across some Japanese proverbs I would like to share with you throughout this video. And the first one goes something like this. Trash accumulates in stagnant water. Now, me, again, <laughs> the trash and the stagnant water. That sort of resonated with me because I've been feeling very stagnant in almost every area of my life. I feel unmotivated. I feel like I lack any discipline to keep something consistent. I feel like I can't do anything productive in any realm of my life and my camera is about to die, yay. <laughs> See, I can't even charge my camera right. But I'm constantly down on myself and I feel shitty, honestly, from all the food I've been just shoving down my face for the last several months. My camera died. Where was I? I basically just feel like I haven't made any progress on my life goals or my life in general <laughs> for like the last year. I feel very stuck. Which leads me to my next Japanese proverb. Be not afraid of going slowly. Be afraid of standing still. Um, I'm afraid of both, so <laughs> a little bit of a problem, because if I'm standing still, I know no progress is being made, I know nothing is being done. If I'm going slowly, then I feel like I'm not trying hard enough. I feel like it's not happening fast enough. And I'm a very impatient person. So here's what I do when I have the urge to go at all, <laughs> because sometimes the depression takes over. I go and I take off at a sprint and then like halfway down the block I realize it's really hard to juggle all of these things that I want to do all at once and then I start to slow to a jog and then I collapse to the ground and cry for like three days because I can't do any of it because I can't handle any of it all at once because I go 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 and I burn out and then I beat myself up for burning out and the cycle sort of repeats itself which is fabulous. <laughs> but instead of treating these downfalls like lessons I could be learning from, I just think I didn't try hard enough. This time I have to go harder. So again, the sprint starts and the cycle continues and repeats. <laughs> so here's another Japanese proverb that I could stand to take a lesson from. We learn little from victory, much from defeat. In a moment of defeat, Beating yourself up doesn't solve anything. And I would know. I'm <laughs> the queen of self-deprecation and beating myself up. Especially when things don't go not only right, but don't go perfectly. I hate feeling stupid and when it comes to learning something new, even something that might be helpful in my life, I still feel stupid. I feel stupid for not having realized it before or not having learned that before. And when you deny the lesson of every defeat, it just sort of builds up. So I feel real dumb right now. <laughs> don't deny the lesson in the failure. Don't ignore your suffering, but also don't wallow in it, you know? Because being at your lowest, feeling your worst, something productive can come of it. Figure out the lesson in your failure. And it doesn't have to be something you've caused. It doesn't have to be your fault. It can be, oh, 
eating that piece of cake makes me feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> I feel like garbage after I eat the cake, both mentally and physically. Or the lesson could be Becca's a bitch and she needs to get out of my life. I need to start learning from my defeats so that I can make progress on the things that keep knocking me down because the same things knock me down and I think it's time to start that. The day you decide to do it is your lucky day. Another Japanese proverb for you and I guess today is my lucky day but it sure doesn't feel like it yet. <laughs> Beginning is easy, continuing is hard. No shit. <laughs> That's a big issue I have. That is essentially my problem in a sentence. I'm great at starting things. I'm not great at finishing them or saying them through. I guess the one exception is like the videos that I managed to put out, like those are complete in their own way. But even then I get upset with myself because I feel like it's not a perfect product and I just have to put it out because I'm not being consistent enough. So I have to put the video out. I just feel like there's always something else that I need to be working on or doing all at once and it feels overwhelming mostly to feel like I have had a lot of starts and zero crossings of the finish line. I somehow collapse between the start of the race and the end of the finish line. You know, I there's some time in there where I just give up and walk off the track and walk home and eat some ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> And by the way, that's not me complaining that life isn't handing me all these things. That's me expressing how frustrated I, I am with myself because I know I'm the only reason I haven't crossed the finish line on any of the things I've wanted to finish. So fun fact, I have planned out and started writing a total of seven novels. And when I say planned out, I mean thoroughly planned out almost every chapter, every scene, because I'm a planner, I'm a, I'm a plotter. Um, I've never finished a single one from the first one I started when I was like eight <laughs> to now as an adult. Fucking how many years later is that? I don't know. I don't math very well. It's a lot of years later to make zero progress on a life goal of becoming an author. Something I've always wanted to do was have a book published. It's been a lifelong dream of mine. And it's something if I don't ever do, I know I will regret it. Fact, I'm sweaty. <laughs> Another fact. I, my senior year of high school, um, was unhappy with my weight and I lost 34 pounds in the course of like six months. And I managed to keep it off up until about eight or nine months ago when I just, for some reason, started eating my feelings for eight straight months and not being consistent with my workouts. Not only did I gain back the 34 pounds, um, I gained an additional 11 pounds. I'm currently the heaviest weight I have ever been. So if I was uncomfortable 10 pounds ago, that tells you I am so uncomfortable in my body right now. And I feel so incredibly insecure. <laughs> and I have no one to blame but myself. This time around has been a lot harder to stick to it and I feel dumb. I feel just dumb. <laughs> also having to do with my weight, this is kind of sad and it's gonna sound really sad and I'm sorry, but it's, it's my honest truth. Since I have started gaining this weight, what feels like very rapidly. It's 40 pounds in like eight months. It feels like a lot. I have avoided going out in public more because I am just so uncomfortable and I constantly feel like everyone is criticizing how I look. And I have avoided hanging out with friends who used to know me when I was thinner because all I can think is that all they see when they look at me is how much weight I've gained. And I know that that's not true. I know my friends don't care. That's just how I've been living my life since I started gaining weight. And I'm kind of sick of that as well. Fact, I can't seem to stick to a consistent upload schedule. <laughs> as evidenced by whenever this video comes out. Fact, my depression tends to come in waves. And though it feels like there are longer times where the water is calm in between each wave, each wave has started to feel bigger and bigger as time has gone on for a little while. That makes me frustrated because I feel like I'm, I feel so scatterbrained 
and pulled in 20 different directions and unable to focus that I feel like I can't even think about what I can do to help myself deal with the waves better or make the waves smaller again, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Fact, I might be allergic to bees and wasps, so I'm kind of terrified right now. I also have awful chigger bites on my um, ankles. <laughs> this is what I get for trying to go outside. That have been there for a week and they're itching like a bitch right now. Fact, this t-shirt describes every aspect of my life, which is why I made it. <laughs> Fact, I have always been self-critical, but I don't see it as critical. I see it as just self-hating for as long as I can remember. That's how it's always been. I don't know how to think differently. And I want to, because my first thought that I ever remember having as a human entity <laughs> was that I hated myself. And that's like really sad to say. And I don't wanna cry on YouTube. It's really hard to admit that that's just been a reality of mine for a long time. And that's something that I would like to change. I would like to have a more self-compassionate view of who I am because I am self-critical to the point where it is not productive. Critic criticism is supposed to be productive in some way. I feel like it's not productive to beat myself up and I know it's not and it's been my whole life. I didn't know that other people don't talk to themselves that way. I really had no idea until like the last couple of years or so. It didn't occur to me. Just thought everyone hated themselves and we're all just here hating ourselves trying to live life. <laughs> but apparently that's not the case. I think I've always been that way. I've always kind of been a perfectionist. Hooey, it is hot out here. Um, but I know that's not healthy either. Fact, starting and planning things I want to do is something I'm really good at. I'm good at planning. Um, I love planning things. It's fun for me. And I like organizing and doing all that shit. The sustaining and persevering and continuing even when the motivation is gone part of it not so much. <laughs> Another proverb for you. Vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. We need a vision, clearly. I need a vision. You may be fine. Maybe you have all your shit together. The vision I have is one year of hustle hard, play hard, one year of doing what I'm afraid of, working towards my goals, coming to a place of self-compassion, and a year of no excuses. I want to commit to that as my vision. And if a year from now, I feel I have fully committed to that principle in my life and I still haven't made any progress on any of my goals or where I want my life to be or my mental health, I will fully admit defeat. I will fully admit defeat. Some of my dreams maybe aren't meant to be for me. If a year from now I have worked my ass off and I've really done my honest best and I haven't made any progress. And I wanna make this clear. When I say hustling hard and playing hard, I don't mean overdoing it because I've been there. That's all I do. I overdo it. I burn out. That's my life <laughs> in a sentence. And I know that doesn't help me. I mean distraction-free hustle and distraction-free play. Separating the two completely, no multitasking, and really putting my heart and soul and my focus into it. And when I say doing what I'm afraid of, I don't mean doing something stupid or dangerous or something that's going to kill me. I just mean the paranoia I've been having with doing all the case videos has sort of prevented me from living a normal life and doing just general things that most people would never be afraid of um, to try and like stamp some of that down and live a more normal life. <laughs> Go grocery shopping without worrying about dying, you know, but also trying new things that I normally would say no to for stupid reasons, you know, things that might be fun or just to try or just to have a new experience, try a new thing. That's something I think I need in my life. I think that's part of the reason I feel stagnant. And when I say working towards my goals, I don't mean reaching the end of those goals because let's face it, a lot of the things I've talked about that I've wanted to change aren't things that change in a year fully. You know, you can make progress on your goals and that's what I mean. Sometimes goals take longer than a year, you know, and I, I know that and it's really hard. <laughs> could I lose 30 pounds in a year? Yeah, I think if I tried really fucking hard, I could, um, but it may not happen. 
you know, but have I made progress on my weight loss? That's the goal by the end of the year. Could I write a book in a year? Yeah, absolutely. You can buy, write a book in way less time than that. Um, could I write a book in a year, then edit it a thousand times, then send it out to a bunch of agents, try to find the right agent, query and have the agent submit it to publishers, get it published, go through more copy edits, go through a release and press and promotion and all that stuff in a year? No. <laughs> Probably not. And again, I recognize that. I know I'm not going to be done with a lot of these things in a year. When I say no excuses, I mean no bullshit excuses. This means on more days than not when I'm in a depressive sort of place, just getting my ass out of bed and then I start my day and if it falls apart halfway through, okay, I, I tried to start my day, you know? And to not give up and not let it tear me down and fight as hard as I possibly can. Because sometimes I think we get used to giving in to our own, our own problems, our own mental weaknesses. We just sort of become like complacent in it because change is difficult and staying in the same place is really fucking easy. So this year I'm talking about is really about making progress being consistent and getting myself to a place mentally, physically, emotionally, where I can perform at my best as consistently as possible. And noticely, I said consistent, not all the time, because shit happens and ups and downs are a part of the human experience. I just want more ups and less moments of like, always down here, up here for a second, always down here, you know? More balance. Balance is what this year is about. <laughs> so as for why I'm telling all you this, strangers on the internet, but not strangers as well, people who have continued to support me, continued to follow what I've been doing on here for whatever reason, and people who seem to not care when I put up a video like this in addition to the other stuff. I know I have a genuine kind, respectful, empathetic, and funny community of people. And I feel very lucky to have all of you supporting or having my back or whatever it is you do to interact with this channel. Even if you are just a lurker and you've never commented in your life, um, thanks for being around. I couldn't not share what I'm feeling and what I want to do because I wanted to extend the opportunity to join me on this journey. You know, anyone out there who feels stagnant or feels like they haven't made any progress on something they've been wanting to do for forever, please join me. Having a group of people all working towards things that they really want to do, but all sort of having a similar timeline of this goal in mind or making progress in your life, I think can really bond people together. I always know when I take a journey alone, it can be important to take journeys alone, but taking a similar journey of struggle with someone else or seeing someone else struggle with something similar to you, I don't know, it's helped me in the past to watch people openly share their struggles and openly share their, their shortcomings and how they deal with that. And I am just trying to be as open and honest as possible in the hope that if even one person finds what I'm saying or what I post in the future concerning all the things I want to do um, helpful, then sharing this with you will have been worth it. Can't talk. Can't English. Losing thought because it's hot. So here is my final Japanese proverb to you, which is great because I look a mess. It's hot and my neighbor's AC just turned on. <laughs> Learn from yesterday. Live for today. Hope for tomorrow. So if you're going to join me on this journey, let me know what it is you want to work on down below. What are some areas in your life that you've either been neglecting or maybe not making any progress on some lifelong dreams that you've been putting aside and putting aside and now you have the time but you're not doing the crime no now you're not putting in the time you have the time but you're not committing to it um, let me know down below what it is in this year of no excuses and this year of hustle <laughs> know what to call is. It all sounds stupid. What it is you would like to work on alongside everyone else who's going to be making this journey. Because fuck waiting for New Year's and 
fuck waiting for Mondays. I'm good at that. I, I, I'm like, ah, I fucked up. Well, I'm just gonna take the week off from all of it and fucking start again Monday. And then Mon if Monday's sh like screwed, then I'm screwed. <laughs> there is literal sweat dripping from the top of my spine down to my ass crack. <laughs> but regardless whether you join me or not, or you just read the comments and support, be respectful of everyone's situation and what they're going through. And know that everybody has different struggles and measuring struggles against struggles isn't something that helps you be productive solving your own issues. You know, I'll talk to you guys down in the comments and in future videos because I'm not exactly sure what kind of videos I'm gonna put out concerning this, but I, I wanna show you progress I'm making in the areas of my life that I've talked about. And so you'll see updates from me about all of this. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, friends. And have a good night. Excuse me. <laughs> Bye. I'm sweaty. Ah.